You have been born many times and you have died many times. You have shed the body many times and you have taken on another form many times. But you've forgotten it all. So today, you think, what will happen to me when I die? I don't want to die. I don't want to leave this body which is so precious to me. But is it so precious? Is it really? If it was so precious to you and so important to you, then why are you suffering? Yes? Yes. So, if we get involved with this process of suffering, and that suffering comes from fear, and the basic cause of fear is death. We cling to what we assume to be existent. But is it really existence that you are living now? No, it's not. You can only know of existence when you know the inner self of your soul. That is existence. Not this little physical frame. Not this mind filled with all kinds of thoughts. The loves and the hates and the anguish and the... You name it. That is not your existence. So, it is because of the false belief in existence which you think is existence is causing all the misery. Huh? Are you a little bugger? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just relieving the tension of it. What does that mean? That you have been misconceived. You have been misconceived by your mother. But it was necessary to learn these lessons in life. But we can write this misconception into truer conception, into higher conception, into purer conception. Hmm? And what is the purest of all conception? What is the purest of all conception? Is non-conception. <laughs> non-conception of one's identity that I am Jean, Jack, James, or John. That's non-conception. Conception stems with the mind in regarding yourself to be the I. I am Jean. I am Joan. I am Jack and I am John. But you are not. You are only a matter of name and form. Now, are you really you? Or 
are you just a conception of what you think that is you? I hope I'm not going to say that. Do you really think that you are you? Hmm? Or is it just a thought that makes you think that you are you? Is it just some form of little patterning uh, that formed in your minds uh, over the ages? which makes you think that I am something. And that very thought, my beloved, uh, is the cause of all fear. Hmm? I exist. The mind says that. And the mind does not want to lose the existence, therefore it fears. Because to the mind, fear is not a continuation of life. Death, rather. Death is not a continuation of life. But death becomes a cessation of life. And that is what we fear. You do not want to seize life, yet understand this, and truly so, that life never ceases. Life is an onward process. Hmm? Good. So where are you when you are fast asleep? Are you conscious of life? Are you conscious of your surroundings? Are you conscious of your wife or your children or your job or whatever? Huh? You're not. You're not. You are dead to life then. Same process. Same thing. Six of one or half a dozen of the other. And that's all what death is about. There is no death. When you fall asleep, can you say, becoming totally unconscious of your surroundings, can you say that I am not living? You are living. You are alive. The stage I would like you to reach is this, and perhaps you will, if you are regular in your spiritual practice, but even during sleep, you are totally aware. To be aware even in sleep, is the first stage to be aware of what is death. Because once you become aware of death, you will know and realize that there is really no death. You're just going from one room to the other, or changing one shirt and putting on another. That's all. Now, when this is understood, when this fear of the unknown is lost, then all the fears that one has in his or her mind will disappear. Hmm? Will disappear. For the cause of every fear is the fear of the unknown. That is the basis of any kind of fear that you could suffer. And I would challenge any psychologist or psychiatrist to defy me, uh, to defy me on this factor. 
The purpose of life is to be fearless and live life fearlessly. Why fear? Why fear? Why fear? What is there to fear? What is there to lose? What have you brought with you and what are you taking with you? Are you taking your wife with you? Are you taking your children with you? Are you taking your wealth with you? Hmm? Are you taking your properties, your mansions, your whatever you got? You can't even take your B O double L S with you. <laughs> I've got to be blunt sometimes hmm? to drive a point home. The basic fear in the mind of man is of the unknown, and the unknown is death. What happens after death? Would you like to know? Hmm? Really? Yeah? I'll tell you, if you want to. <laughs> what happens after death? And where do you go to? You go nowhere. For all the dimensions of the universe are contained here in the universe. When a person dies, he sheds to the tired body. Hmm? That it requires no more for further evolution, for further progress. And that means going back home to the source. Hmm? He requires that no more. So he sheds the body. And yet, you can will your body to exist for many, many, many years more hmm? for the weary too can go a long way. So now you have discarded the body. Okay. Good. What goes is your soul. Now, what is the soul? The soul is a composition, a composite wholeness of your being which comprises of your thoughts, your ego soul, the impressions of your actions and uh, that which you have found in the world as a reaction. That is the soul. So, with the soul being of a much more subtler quality, it has to go to a subtler dimension. Hmm? It doesn't mean any place somewhere up there or down there or heaven and hell that's all rubbish. Heaven and hell is here and now. Hmm? Good. Now, whatever dominant thought you have in mind that has been dominating your life, 
that will have to be sorted out in that dimension. Now, being devoid of the physical body, the soul has a greater chance of evaluating itself. It has no encumbrances because the body could be very limiting. Now, without these physical encumbrances, the soul exists on its own. And what the soul does, it does not burn in the fire of hell or experience the joy of heaven. You know, these are just conceptions put forward by organized religions. I tell you what it is comprised of. And the only thing the soul does is this. It evaluates itself. It evaluates all the past existences of itself. It evaluates all the experiences it has experienced. And after evaluation, it comes to a decision in itself. Where must I be born? And to whom must I be born? So it means our children, we do not choose them, but our children choose us. And then the soul has to wait for the right moment to find the proper genetic combination between two people. You know, the chromosomes and DNA and all that, I don't need to go into that. Don't need to go into science. Hmm? It waits for the proper combination to take a rebirth into this school of life.